What's up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jacob Panisi. I'm a strength and conditioning coach at Millsaps Training Facility, which is an elite motocross training facility down here in South Georgia. And in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through a workout that is designed to help build strong legs for motocross. Let's get into it. So if you don't already know, the legs are the most important muscle group in your body for riding motocross. The legs are the largest muscle group of your body, which also means they're your largest point of contact with the bike. So they're responsible for controlling the bike and acting as a second set of suspension when you're going through that rough terrain. Any professional rider will tell you that legs are key if you want to ride at that elite level. That's why it's so important for you to build strong legs. So let's get into the workout. So the structure of the workout, we're looking to build strength. So we're gonna shoot for four sets of between eight to 12 reps, and you want around 30 to 60 seconds of rest in between each set. Now, the first set should always be a warm up, and that acts as sort of a guide to help you know where to start your working sets with regards to what weight you're actually lifting. A lot of people struggle knowing where to start. That's one of my most commonly asked questions is what do you think I should use for weight for this exercise? And there's no right answer. You just need to try it out and make changes based on your feedback, you know, based on what you feel. Okay, without further ado, let's get into the exercises. Of course, we always start with a general dynamic warm up. You can see in this video, I walk on a treadmill at roughly three to 3.5 miles per hour on 10% incline or incline level 10. And then I follow that by doing some dynamic stretches just to raise my body temp, get my blood circulation going, loosen up my muscles, and just kind of get me in the right frame of mind for what I'm about to do. Okay, the first exercise is going to be a barbell back squat. The barbell back squat is one of the best workouts to build just raw strength that will carry over into other lifts and especially to the motocross track. Now, if you don't have the right equipment for this, you can also perform the goblet squat with a dumbbell or a kettlebell. Obviously, you won't be able to load the movement as heavy as the barbell back squat, but this is a critical stepping stone for developing the right technique. Now, the goal, as I said in the beginning, for all these exercises is progressive overload. So make sure you're upping the weight if you can. Okay, exercise number two is hex bar deadlift. This movement feels pretty similar to performing a squat, but where the weight is actually located and how you have to brace your body is very different. Make sure you prioritize maintaining a neutral spine or a flat back at all times. Now, if you don't have a hex bar, conventional deadlift works just as well. It's just not quite as beginner friendly. And you'll also find you can lift less weight with a typical barbell because the load shifts from mostly legs to almost 60-40 between the legs and lower back. Exercise number three, barbell RDL or Romanian deadlift. The RDL primarily targets the hamstrings and the glutes. And this exercise heavily relies on the mind-muscle connection. If you find that your lower back is tightening up more so than your legs, you're either going too heavy or you're not focusing on using your legs to perform the work. Another thing to note is that you don't need to go all the way down to touch the floor. I personally recommend going far enough down to feel a real good stretch in the hamstrings and in the glutes and then reverse the motion back to the top. Okay, that brings us to exercise number four, alternating lunges. This one is pretty straightforward. You can either use dumbbells or you can put a barbell on your back. And of course, we think reps per leg, so you'd be performing eight to 12 reps on each leg per set. Now you'll wanna be sure you're taking a large enough step forward to reduce the positive shin angle, or another way to say that is the forward lean of your shins. While allowing your knee to go past your toe isn't inherently dangerous, it's definitely going to put more stress on your knee than keeping a more neutral shin angle. Also, be sure you're maintaining a tall torso this will help keep your legs in control of the movement and not let your lower back get all fired up. Exercise number five is gonna be the barbell hip thrust. With this exercise, getting started tends to be the most difficult part. If you can use bumper plates or something to help the weight start higher off the ground, it'll save you a lot of headache and awkward positions. Key points here, make sure you drive into the ground through your heels and then really squeeze your glutes and your hamstrings as hard as you can for a good pause at the top of the movement. Take note also of how close your feet are to your butt. At the top of the motion, you should have a nice 90 degree angle in your knee pit area. All right, our sixth and final exercise is going to be calf raises. 
These can be done numerous ways, but my favorite way is to load up the bar and elevate my toes. Be sure to keep your legs stiff, but not locked, and try to remain in control of the weight. The calves are very fibrous and elastic, which is why they're so good for running and jumping, but this means it's pretty easy to cheat when you start bouncing with the weight. Now, if you're new to working out, make sure you start slow and try not to overdo it with the weight. Some of these exercises can be dangerous if you have no idea what you're doing. So be sure to always take the appropriate safety precautions and if possible, try to work with a trained professional until you build up enough confidence to do these things on your own. All right, one last note I want you guys to think about before we wrap it up for today. Try to remember to have some fun with it. Fall in love with the process of reaching your goals. Sometimes we just get so caught up in the destination that we forget the journey is what we're actually living every day. It's what we can control right here, right now. Now, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future workout videos like this one. And I'll see you guys next time.